Today we're going to be testing out Ford's Blue Cruise. This is their hands-off, semi-autonomous driving mode available on vehicles like this 2023 Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat. Now, I did use it a little bit when I picked up this vehicle, but we had pretty much torrential downpours during my entire drive home, so I wasn't able to really be able to use it and see how well it worked because obviously you shouldn't be using cruise control in bad weather anyway but you definitely don't want to be doing it in a semi-autonomous mode if you know cameras and things are not available now my screen here is telling me blue cruise is available i click the button and it is supposed to activate it we're going to be setting our speed here to 110 kilometers an hour normally this would be uh really slow for me i don't usually drive this slow but we're going to be doing it this way just to try it out and also save a little bit on the energy when it comes to this vehicle now we've done a full tour and review of this specific ford f-150 lightning so you can check that video out if you're interested we've also done a video talking about the charging infrastructure here in quebec but if you're really just interested in this system then stay tuned as we're going to be going over it so how does blue cruise work well we've got two infrared sensors on either side of the steering wheel one just behind this is the main one really behind the infotainment screen and then there is another one on the door card and they should be watching my eyes making sure that i am paying attention to what's going on because that really is the most important thing is that you're facing forward and ensuring that you're actually paying attention because this will not necessarily prevent an accident it does take all the equipment that's going on with these vehicles such as the adaptive cruise control, lane centering, you know, you've got all this sort of stuff going on that once connected together creates Blue Cruise. And this is something I've been talking about for several years now that manufacturers should be able to incorporate all of this stuff that's already on their vehicles and come out with some sort of system like this. Now, like GM, this uses a mapped network of roads to be able to be activated. Here in North America, Ford says there's about 200 kilometers of roadways that have been mapped out that you can use Blue Cruise on. Compare that to GM, the last time I checked, I think they were at like 650,000. It's quite a bit, bit of a difference. Now, the car just slowed down to 100 kilometers. I don't know if that's because that's the speed limit, but it seems like it has done that. Now that could be a problem for people that don't drive the exact speed limit. I mean, let's be honest, who does? Nobody does, right? You've got your, uh, your average uh, consumer doing maybe 5, 10, 15% over the speed limit. That's sort of my general rule of thumb speed limit here on the highway is 100 so you know i find that 115 is is plenty good but you know there's tons of people that are doing 160 on this highway and then you've got the people doing 100 so we'll have to see i want to see how many times that's going to force to go over because that will be extremely annoying to have to reset that we're coming up to another traffic sign here that's what ford says it uses the traffic sign recognition we're passing it well, it didn't do anything that time so we'll have to see it could also be using the gps data because you know with gps these days with maps they do have the speed limits built into those information that comes to the vehicle so we'll have to see how that goes but so far it's been working my hands have been off i have been paying attention i've been looking kind of at you and the camera but for the most part we have been more or less centered in the lane here and driving along and it works right that's how you would expect these systems to work we've tested it on gm haven't had any problems with it we did have a problem in the sense that the entire system failed and just wouldn't work anymore so i'm hoping ford has you know tested their stuff to make sure that the hardware will work right because obviously it comes down to making sure all the sensors and cameras and everything work properly on the vehicle but we'll see so essentially i'm going to leave you now we're going to do a hyperlapse for the next little while and i'll pick it up next time the car does something Ah, see, so you're already back with me, not even a minute down the road. I had moved my eyes over to grab my coffee on the info or the driver cluster screen here, popped up saying to watch the road. So, for example, if I were to spend some time looking over on the right, this is extremely dangerous. Do not try this at home. There we go. So, it takes about five to ten seconds for it to recognize that you're not paying attention. And it's a long time right let's be honest that is a very long time to not be paying attention to the road but you know i mean you could have a situation where you're looking down at your passenger you come back you look back down i don't know whatever ford has obviously worked out how long that system should work before it intervenes and i imagine similar to the Cadillacs that we've driven if you really aren't paying attention the system will shut off now gm has said 
I haven't tested it because I'm not stupid, but GM says at least when you're not paying attention with Super Cruise, it first of all flashes to tell you to pay attention. If you really don't, it flashes red to tell you you gotta pay attention. And then if you don't, it is supposed to disengage and pull you over to the side of the road with the hazards on, and it will not re-engage until you've turned off the vehicle and done a full power cycle. Now, I'm not sure if Ford does the same thing. I'm not going to be testing it because I actually have somewhere to go today and I don't really want to be messing around with that system. The point is you should be paying attention, just as if you were driving the car yourself. These are not meant to get you to from point A to point B completely sleeping in the back. So again, we will pick it up if the car does anything different or unique, but I will let it go back to the hyperlapse now. Now I just completed a lane change there. That is something I had to do myself. Ford, it does say a lane change will become available down the road. We have seen that with some vehicles. Again, we've driven things like the Cadillac Escalade that will do that. And then even some other luxury brands like BMW, I believe we've tested that with the X5, that it knows that there's nobody coming beside you, so it will make a lane change for you and then go back to the lane. And those systems, typically when it does that, it puts on the flashers for like 25 seconds and then moves over eventually and turns it off. So again, if you're doing it yourself, it's a whole lot easier, but I'll do it here in real time with you. I'm just going to put on my turn signal, pull over. There's really no resistance on the steering wheel, so that's no problem. And then as I pull it back into the lane, system re-engages, we're back to hands-free and it shows it up on the screen. So it's very easy to understand Again, a little different from, from GM where they've got a sensor or light bar in the steering wheel that actually shows you if it's engaged or not. You do have to kind of look down a little bit more into the gauge cluster to make sure that you are hands-free, but simple enough, it works. So again, we will pick it up next time it does something. Well, we're almost at the 30 minute mark now since I started this video, but also since we started our trip on the highway here. So far, it's been pretty good. I've had no issues with it, but to be fair, at the same time, we haven't had anything that would throw a curveball to this vehicle, such as somebody cutting me off, or maybe the lanes not being quite marked the way that they should be, or construction messing things up. There were a couple things that I do want to know. We did have a construction zone, but the lanes weren't changed, so nothing happened there, but we did have an exit off the highway going onto the 402 towards Brantford. That's where the lane would split in half, and the, the car did stay in this lane. It knew where we were going, or at least it assumed where I was going, but I don't think it would have worked the same way had I been taking that exit, since I'm not using the navigation built in to the Ford. I don't know if it would have taken that into account. And I think that's where the next step of this technology will go. I'm not a big fan of Ford's infotainment system. It's been pretty slow. Their map system is kind of meh. I only use Apple CarPlay because I need to know where I'm going. I need to make sure there's no traffic or any radar on the road. And Google Maps does a good job doing that. But you know, I would probably use the built-in navigation more, and it, especially if they did come out with these systems that really tied into wherever you're going, it will do all the mapping and everything for you and understand where you need to go so that maybe would make those those sort of changes for you, those lane changes or those merges a little bit easier, that'd be great. So that'd be the, the next step. And, and who knows, maybe it really does do that if you were using Ford system here, but they do have to improve their technology there. But aside from that, everything has worked out. You know, I haven't had any complaints with it. It's been a pretty stress-free drive. This is the slowest I have ever been in my life. That's the only thing that's frustrating <laughs> if I were to complain about it. I mean, 108 right now. Oh, 107, oh my God. I have never driven this slow on the 401 before, but what I find interesting is up until really right now, I've been doing essentially the same energy economy that I did when I was coming to this, you know, to my house. When we did our test loop, it was, it's only about two uh, kilowatt hours more. We're coming up to that 100 kilometer mark, which is where I test these vehicles. That's where I start my my fuel testing or my energy economy testing. So currently we're at 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers doing you know, 110 uh, versus the 32. 
that I did when I was coming here, and that was different conditions. It was wet, very raining, you know, difficult weather conditions, so kind of evens out. So I think at the end of the day, the one thing I've learned here is speeding doesn't really affect the range. You should just speed all the time. But that's about it for us on this episode. The GoPro here is going to die, so it's kind of why we're ending it, but I'm sure I won't have any issues throughout the rest of my drive here as we take over control and pass some slower traffic. I do thank you for watching this video. We have uh, quite a lot of stuff going on these days here on Test Drive. So if you are not a subscriber yet and you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps us uh, get to our next milestone, which is 50,000 subscribers. And also we uh, appreciate if you do take a look at uh, some of the options we have here to support our channel financially. We've got a little merch store that's been around for a while. We've got some different shirts and stuff. Also a membership to be able to support this channel on a monthly basis. But there's some good stuff going on. But as always, if you have any questions about this episode, do not hesitate to leave a comment below. That is why it's there. We do get back to you as quickly as we can. And if you are a member and pay for one of our tiers, then you will get priority access to get your replies as well as a little badge beside your name so you can check that out but aside from that when i'm done i'm going to continue my uh, my next 55 minutes here hopefully hands-free but uh, thanks for watching until next time take care